Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my post scary fast Apple event coverage. This is sort of a mix between my usual live streams and my shorter form videos because I'm coming in hot right after my two and a half hour live stream and I really really wanted to break down what we know about the MacBook Pro, about the iMac I can only say it got the M3 and it still has lightning accessories. So it sucks. You probably should just get an M2 based Mac mini. I will cover this in subsequent live streams and other videos, but the absolute star of the show in some good ways, in some bad ways, in some surprising ways was definitely the MacBook Pro. Now Apple calls it mind blowing and head turning. I think the space black color is especially to blame here for the head turning. It's the best part about this MacBook Pro. Otherwise, this upgrade seems to almost ignore the existence of the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pro that we just got in the beginning of this year and instead, instead seems to really focus on the fact that well if you want a new MacBook probably get a 14 inch uh, MacBook Pro right because that one comes with like the widest variety of processors that we've ever seen in an Apple Silicon Mac so let me break down exactly what we are getting well it starts at $15.99 which is definitely a reduction from the $19.99 which was the previous 14 inch MacBook Pro however that one came with a an M2 Pro chip. This one now starts with the base M3 processor. Now the M3 is basically what you mostly expected. 10 to 15 percent performance uplifts and some tasks more especially if you're uh, doing something that supports um, mesh shading which is now hardware accelerated. Uh, the GPU now has something called dynamic caching which should optimize the usage of the uh, memory and the cache on the chip. Uh, it remains to be seen how well it performs and of course hardware accelerated ray tracing which should have its biggest impact on games that support it but also 3D rendering tasks. So the M3 chip is definitely an uplift over M2 but obviously the previous MacBook Pro started with the M2 Pro. Well unless you actually compare it with the MacBook Pro that was just discontinued and that's the 13 inch MacBook Pro the one with the touch bar that one is now gone and in its place is a 14 inch mini led of a 14 inch macbook pro that starts at 1599 with 512 gigabytes of storage and 8 gigabytes of ram it's part of a highly confusing lineup but it really offers a lot of choice with the macbook pro now coming with m3 chips m3 pro chips and M3 Max chips with some models getting some stuff exclusive obviously like for example Space Black is only available for um, uh, the M3 Pro and M3 Max configured MacBook Pros and only the 14 inch version gets the M3 while the, M, uh, while the 16 inch version still starts uh, with a Pro variant of the processor. All the processors are based on 3 nanometer. Um, again, uh, with exact uh, uh, performance considerations that will be up to benchmarks. There is some stuff that has actually seen a downgrade. For example, the M3 Pro features fewer performance cores than the M2 Pro. The M2 Pro featured up to eight performance cores but had four efficiency cores. The M3 Pro now has uh, uh, six performance cores but more efficiency cores. So uh, six efficiency cores instead of four. While the M3 Max keeps the same four efficiency cores of the M2 Max but moves all the way up from eight performance cores on the M2 Max to uh, 12 performance cores. The M3 Max also has a super high-end variant with 128 gigs of memory. There is some co confusing stuff that you will see. For example, memory bandwidth has actually gone down on the M2 Pro. Um, I will show you that on Apple's website actually here. Um, if we compare Max, right? and we'll go with the M3 14-inch MacBook Pro, then we'll take the 
uh, old M2 Pro MacBook Pro, uh, and then we take the new M3 Pro, you can actually see, for example, when we move to uh, the memory bandwidth of the M Pro chip, uh, M2 Pro chip, that is 200 gigabits per second, while on the M3 Pro, that's 150 gigabits per second. And on the Max chip, you actually now sort of have to choose where a uh, base version now ha uh, has here 300 gigabits per second, but this one has 400 gigabits per second. Where exactly can I actually find this? Um, is there no um, 16 coronal engine? Oh, right, it says up to 400 gigabits per second here, but uh, you should consider that the base version only has 300 gigabits, while here on the M2 Max, you previously got 400 gigabits per second across the board. You also have slightly confusing uh, uh, RAM configurations. M3 is still like your typical um, 8 gigs of memory or 16 or 24, but on the Pro chips, you now start with 18 gigabytes of memory uh, instead of a 16. You can move up to 36, 48, 64, 96, or 128. Some of those exact configurations will depend on whether you're getting the Pro or the Max or uh, the Max uh, with its base version or the fully enabled version. So please look it up. The highest end configuration is more expensive than the highest end configuration of the M2 Max MacBook Pros, but you definitely are also getting a little more. Um, eight terabytes of storage is still the highest highest end configuration for uh, the higher end configurations, two terabyte is the max storage for the 14 inch with M3. All those uh, devices have um, a liquid retina XDR displays that are um, that go up to 600 nits in SDR content, which was previously limited to 500 nits. So you guys are seeing there's a lot of info coming in and I'm trying to give you a glimpse of it, but it, there's actually quite a lot of stuff here that is disappointing. As I said, MacBook Pro 14 inch still limited to 8 gigabytes of memory as its base configuration, right? Still charging $200 more for uh, 8 gigabytes of extra memory to get to 16 gigabytes. N Apple not using faster memory apparently, right? Because if they were using LPDDR5X, this would be 35% faster, which for example, the recently announced Snapdragon X Elite promises to use 35% percent faster LPDDR5X memory and this is why instead of 100 gigabits per second gigabit per second of memory bandwidth on the uh, M3 MacBook Pro the Snapdragon X Elite promises 135 um, new capabilities beyond what I've already mentioned for the GPU, um, consider AV1 uh, decoding capabilities. Um, neural Engine seems not to have seen the same kind of uplift as on the A17 Pro. So we'll have to see how that uh, compares when it comes to uh, machine learning tasks or uh, how it uh, performs when it comes to metal effects upscaling, which is supported to be run from the Neural Engine on the A17 Pro. We don't know if that is a capability that the M3 Max will share. Apple did not advertise it. Beyond that, most capabilities are largely the same. As I've said, the display is slightly brighter in SDR content. The HDR brightness is the same. The pixel density is the same. The Pro Motion capabilities with adaptive refresh rate rates that uh, top out at 120 hertz are still the same. The weights are um, incredibly similar. Obviously, the M3 for inch macbook pro which does have active cooling but only with one fan is a little lighter than the pro and max variants you still get your 1080p facetime hd camera um, apple advertises only one external display on the 14 inch macbook pro uh, with m3 uh, while the pro versions support two external displays and uh, the uh, max versions support up to four um, it remains to be seen how that um, um, works with both thunderbolt ports and hd and an hdmi port being on the m3 
three version as well. Um, this is something that I cannot yet totally confirm or deny. Please let me know if the con in the comments if I'm getting something wrong here, for example. Um, so um, there does not seem to be any other noticeable changes. Bluetooth is still topping out at Wi-Fi 6E. We don't have Wi-Fi 7 yet. Bluetooth 5.3 is not the latest version. We technically have uh, Bluetooth 5.4, but the improvements there are pretty much meaningless. Um, so it's it's a nice upgrade in several ways. It's definitely not something that you should upgrade from an M2 version from unless you can get like a really nice resale value for your current MacBook. Um, Obviously, as I said before, one of the stars of the show is the space black that you can get on the higher end configurations, which a lot of Mac users have been asking for for a while. Um, so um, the testing, obviously, I, I don't want to go into uh, super details when it comes to the exact performance metrics, because there are a lot of them to consider, right? Um, you can uh, check them out on Apple's website, but I'm really curious what like real world results will look like here. For example, on M3, Apple uh, primarily compares it with the i7, with basically an old Intel based Mac. Um, but you can see that there are some nice like 15, 20% uplifts over M2 devices here which it did, at least this is also comparing it against M2 with active cooling, which should have a little more sustained performance than what you would get from an M2 MacBook Air. Um, so I highly encourage you to, uh, for you to check that out because this is obviously more data than I would cover in this kind of video. But you can see, for example, 3D rendering, seeing a huge uplift, much higher than what you got as an uplift from M1 to M2 Pro. Um, so you're basically getting here like 80 to 90% extra performance. That's nice on, uh, on the Pro chips, but on the Macs, you get really, really big uplifts because you also have a significantly faster CPU with uh, now uh, four extra performance cores. So this is way over twice as fast. Um, and of course the uplifts over Intel-based MacBooks are huge here. So if you are somebody who was still holding out on uh, an Intel uh, Mac, I highly encourage you to get this. If you're on an M1 uh, uh, MacBook uh, in any kind of shape or form and you are not in need of upgrading to something that has more memory, for example, because maybe your workflow has changed, I highly encourage you to still stick with that M1 device and wait maybe until next generation. Hell, with how long Apple supports their devices, you could easily make it till M5 or M6. So it's an interesting upgrade. As I said before, there are some even small downgrades if you wanted to consider it this way, like M3 Pro having fewer performance cores than M2 Pro. There are some interesting pricing configurations here, like um, with the base price of the 14-inch uh, MacBook uh, Pro now, with the M3 version now being $15.99. It will be interesting to see how that compares with like uh, discounted M2 Pro versions, right? Um, those could usually be had for around $17.99, uh, which uh, meant you got 512 gigabytes and 16 gigs of RAM. Here you get for $15.99, you get 512 gigabytes and 8 gigs of RAM. So um, again, you should really consider also older MacBook Pros, especially if their prices go down significantly. My cat is now complaining that I'm keeping her awake. I think she just woke up and I think this is kind of a sign for me to tune out. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Mark Tech tuning out.